Backward design is a course design method that starts by establishing learning goals for the course. There are three stages of backward design and today I'm going to demonstrate them with a story ab about how a girl named Jennifer got her dog, Rex, to stop barking when he's home alone. Let's begin. Rex is a small, rambunctious puppy who loves his person, Jennifer, so much that he hates it when Jennifer leaves the house. He barks and barks and barks to let everyone know how upset he is. After getting so many complaints from the neighbors, Jennifer realizes she has to do something to stop the barking. She sits down at her desk to come up with a dog training plan. Stage one of backward design is to identify desired results. What should learners understand and be able to do? What is the ultimate transfer at the end of the learning experience? Well, Jennifer asks herself these questions and decides that at the end of the training, she wants her puppy Rex calm down and learn to bark less when home alone. Stage two is to determine assessment evidence. How will you know if the learners have accomplished the desired results? What will you accept as an evidence of understanding? What will you accept as evidence of ability to transfer the learning to new situations? And how will you evaluate performance in fair and consistent ways? Jennifer uses the goal she created in stage one to help answer these questions and determine appropriate assessment. In this case, she decides the culminating task assessment would be Rex using what he learned in the current training to stay quiet while Jennifer is at work for eight hours a day. If when Jennifer talks to her neighbors after work and they confirm he is barking less, she would know the training was effective. Stage three is planned learning experiences and instructions. What are the supporting knowledge and skills needed to achieve the goals? What activities, sequences, and resources are best suited to accomplish your goals? Since Jennifer knows her desired results and how she's going to determine if Rex achieves these results, she is able to easily figure out what she needs to teach her puppy Rex and what activities and learning experiences she's going to use. After much research and answering the question stated earlier, Jennifer decides that her main training activity would be to desensitize Rex to her leaving by staging practice setups. A setup would consist of Jennifer going through her normal routine of getting ready to leave the house, giving Rex a special toy, and leaving the house for a few minutes. Staying close to the house, if Jennifer hears Rex barking, she raps on the door. If when she returns after a few minutes and he hasn't barked, she praises him. By repeating this process many times while gradually working up to longer periods of times, she can train Rex to be calm and quiet for the eight hours while she's at work. Jennifer implements her plan over a period of several weeks She's able to teach Rex to bark less when left home alone for short periods of time and ultimately is able to teach him to bark less when she's at work. Jennifer is happy. The moral of this story is backward design simply means designing with the end in mind. It means deciding your goals and your assessments in the beginning, just like Jennifer just did, so that you are focused and informed when creating learning activities. So, in summary, the stages of the backward design approach are stage one, identify desired results, stage two, determine assessment evidence, and stage three, plan learning experiences and instruction. Make sure to continue the conversation on Twitter at hashtag accessmooc. The end. <laughs>